once again something new to share with you and today is going to be about software architecture the basic tools that you're going to encounter in many companies and um, there are many others more of course but I want to just expose you to the basics ones okay the ones that you should normally have in consideration so here's a problem you have one service it could be your website microservice whatever and out of the blue you have tons of requests for information okay uh, and if your service cannot handle it it's going to be kind of like a DDoS attack you know so so pretty much that's the problem you need to handle you know that you may have small user but in the future you may have more so the solution is a lower balancer so what the lower balancer is going to do is that it's going to create new instances of your current service and basically re forward those users to that one okay and in that way you can pretty much uh, have a system that can expand and contract based on the load that you put in now let's go with the next one choosing the right database okay and here I give some example but there's many more than that okay so for example if the, tr the idea of this triangle is that you have to pick two things that you would like to have and regrettably you may not have access to the third one okay so for example if you use MySQL you may have consistency and you may have availability if you pick, pick Cassandra you have availability and partition tolerance then you don't have consistency if you pick MongoDB you have consistency and partition tolerance but you may not have availability now some of these terms sounds weird so that's why I'm going to show you a different way to think about it <coughs> okay so databases like MySQL Microsoft SQL and many others are rational databases you know you have tables parties etc then you have MongoDB which is a non-rational database no SQL for not only SQL and it's, it's a different way to store the information and have access to it and it, in this in this place I'm not going to go too into it and then you have Cassandra which is a distribute you know it's a no SQL distributed and, and and the thing is this is if you grab a rational database it's because you want to ensure that you always have the same data okay as you basically do maybe a cluster you know per se and always respond okay if you basically pick a MongoDB then you have something that it may not always respond but at the same time have all the data and the cluster nodes are always working okay so at least always there's one working I mean one crashes doesn't matter keep going and then you have something like a NoSQL distributed where it's always respond and it's a cluster node uh, always working however it may not have all the same data uh, I am aware even though that I never tried it that Cassandra can be set up in certain way to have something very close to what will be having all the same data but I haven't confirmed it yet because I never had the chance yet to have to use it now let's go with the next problem okay and it, basically the problem is that every single time that you write and read to a database from your service it takes time you know and sometimes what you want to do is to provide this the information that is often most requested okay uh, because in that way you basically reduce the time that you had to basically read from the database you know and also if you had to do a writing you know how to basically wait for the writing to be done in order to have the read. We will see. We'll, we are going to explain better when we see the diagram. So we have three solutions: write through, write around, and write back. Okay. So, uh, by the way, these are the database. These are the red, the cache access patterns that are mostly used. Uh, one is Redis, uh, and the other one is Memcache. Memcache, I say. Is that right? anyways uh, let's continue so write through uh, there's a write order okay the service decided to write to the database but what happened is that it's sending information to the cache system and the cache system reply with the acknowledge 
okay that information is accessible for reading you know so the system can read it but the cache system the one that take care of doing the writing directly to the database and then you know check that you know that can read it so it's is that's that's basically one one way the other way is the write around so pretty much what happened is that the, you are always writing directly to the database and taking care of the acknowledgement that have been done in order to choose when to read from the cache and basically all the information goes to the database directly to the cache so the cache system is more complete for reading you know more than anything else and then let's see the final one that is right through so what happened is that the service talked to the cache system back and forward and you have another service that take care of to synchronize that the database and the cache system matches now one thing that I remember for a long time ago and maybe have changed it is that I think that the Apache ready for every instant had like 53 gigabytes of living limits but I may be wrong in that so don't take my word for it uh, as always I always advise go and check it out by yourself then the next one is the message broker okay I have previous experience with RabbitMQ however uh, Kafka is something that in the future I hope to be able to work with uh, especially in the project but the, ba the basic system is that sometimes between your microservices or projects you know you want to pass information and instead to be hitting a REST API you basically send this message into a queue that can be read later by other microservices and and even though that there are different ways to do exchange you know and, and send message etc I'm going to basically give you the, the the basic of the basic that is these four different modes so you can understand so let's go with the first one the direct mode you produce a message you send it to the broker and out of the blue the broker then is going to make sure to let know the consumer that is receiving a message so the consumer goes and obtain that message okay then you have a persistent guarantee where basically similar to the previous one however it's storing to the database or the not the database the storage the the storage account that your broker medical message broker is using and and what is going to happen is that what is this done this way because maybe your your consumer another microservice uh, is broken you know or something happened uh, and you want to make sure that that message doesn't get lost you know it could be a transaction so the the message broker is going to wait you know keep that message alive for when the consumer goes back and say hey give me messages that I should be receiving it's going to give it to him okay so remember producer create a message send it to the message broker and the message broker like the post office take care of doing the delivery now there is one that is a no persistent these are basically what happened is there are messages that really are not that important to keep keep alive if the time expires because remember there's a limit of space that your message broker you know may have access to and you don't want to fill it up with messages that doesn't matter if the consumer actually was on in order to receive them so what ha what you can do is that you can provide an expiration day and pretty much that happens i mean after a while if the consumer is not there to receive the message that message disappears and nobody cares and then the final one is called fan out and this uh, i everybody call it fan out i call the spammer so kind of like a spammer so the idea is that the consumer register you know in order to say any message that comes from this producer i just want to have a copy please uh, or basically you say to the producer hey producer I want all these you know uh, consumers to basically get a message so it's pretty much like that um, and then this is the final one of the basic tools that is the content delivery network and the idea here is that if you have a service that provide website the only things that you want to send is the information that's more dynamic to change you know maybe you have an image that was generated you know creating some information like a graph you know you had a page with different tables and things like that and you only want to transmit that because you are going to do it quick 
and what the, the content delivery network does is that it have multiple servers spread out that duplicate the information that you store there the static information and pretty much they can go and pick it up at the same time so in the on the page of the person the website looks like it's loading super fast and it's because the information is coming from two different sources uh, if you ever hear about Amazon S3 that is a, C a CDN you know uh, sometimes there are companies that also what they do is that say well any content that's generated like a report or something like that we are going to send it to the S3 so the user can you know, it, there's there's different schemas but the main schema is that is you put like the banner of the website videos that you know anything that is not dynamic you know a legal document that is a PDF etc you should put in the CDN and that that speed up everything anyways so thank you very much uh, for listening and please subscribe and have a beautiful day